the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You must always know the strategy God has allocated for a generation to prosper or for a generation to know him there is a pathway your assignment is to find out what method are you using in this season and some of the things that he shared here are they are not opinions please understand this it is it is very very powerful that you know this the journey to wealth and 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 let me start the journey to wealth is not just a journey to get money. It's a journey to redeem time. I want to start by talking a bit about time. Because if we do not understand the value of time, sorry I may be writing, you may not see it, but no problem. Time. This is a very, very mysterious concept. Time. That the only thing that God gives you is time. And that whatever you make out of that time, destiny is what you do with time. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says to redeem the time because the days are evil. One of the most effective ways to redeem the time is to be prosperous. When you prosper, it's a very powerful strategy to redeem time. The standard, the standard um, challenge of failures and those who are weak and poor is that they never have access to their time. No matter what you have, if you lose time, you don't have anything. A dying man's request is not more money, it's not more ideas, it's not more education. A dying man's request is more time because the moment you have time whatever it is that you desire can come take away a man's time and pour a pile of dollars on him it makes no sense a man that dies is a man who does not have any earthly time again the price and the size of the clothes and the coffin notwithstanding so all that we have been sharing here, listen to me, is so that by the grace of God, I hope you know that it's a cost to spend your entire lifetime seeking money. It's a cost. It was never designed that way. The time that God gave us, there was an assignment connected to it. Are we together? And that you must know the principles that will help you to gain time. Wealth can gain time because you can outsource other people's time. You can have more than 24 hours when you are wealthy. You have to understand this. Because like Ejimi was sharing, there are many people who think this is just about, you know, having money and, you know, it's, it's wonderful. But let me tell you this, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than just a desire to do well. This is what you seek to redeem. Time. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. Are we together? It takes time to build anything that works. This, this, the things you are hearing, just like he told you, most of the people that will share this will never share this free of charge. Impossible. People have invested millions and millions to learn. 
But you cannot give it free when you are hungry. Do you know everybody is really a giver? It's just that there is a level of commitment of your time that will not allow you to freely release. If Joseph's brothers met him in Potiphar's house, he will not forgive them. Forgiveness is easy when you are blessed. That's why you hardly find wealthy people offended and these things are unnecessary. Time. It takes time to build a good home. It takes time to be an effective minister of the gospel. You don't sit down. You ask any preacher you know. You don't sit down and just prepare a spirit-inspired sermon in one or two hours. Aside from the inspiration of the Almighty, you need to study. It takes time. It takes time to teach your children the way of the Lord. It takes time to build relationships. Remember we spoke a bit about it. You want to transit from relationships as a connection to an investment. It takes time. When you take a flight to Lagos, you simply created a system of redeeming time. That whereas it would have taken you 12 hours or 13, hoping that nothing happened on the way. Are we together? If the car breaks down, why are you angry? Because something is happening to your time. Please listen. You have to get this. The whole fight is for this. Time. 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 There is no time in the grave. It takes time to live a life that is effective. Many people cannot afford certain things because of this time. What this phone does is it helps you redeem time. Whereas I would have written a letter and it would have taken two weeks to get to the U.S. with one dial in two minutes. Why do fast foods make a lot of money? They have found a way of redeeming time. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's very, very important. Why is a typewriter obsolete? Because it did not sustain the ability to help men redeem time. So the journey to wealth, among many other things, was primarily designed to give you the environment and the atmosphere where time is of an advantage. I shared with you, the devil has a strategy if you have wealth and have time, you have cheated life. And so you are at liberty to choose one. Time without wealth or wealth without time. What we are teaching you here, brothers and sisters, is more than abundance. You don't need this seminar to have some level of abundance. Some people can have a good job, maybe in an oil company, and have a cash flow that is reasonable. But they are not free. Financial freedom. You see that definition that Jimmy gave you? is important. The ability to have sufficient financial resources alongside the time, the energy, the peace of mind to be blessed by it. It takes time to live an impactful life. Are we together? Imagine that as we are teaching right now, simply because of the financial constraints, we begin to move around with a bowl all around and say, look, if you don't want the diesel to degen to off, or if you don't want us to be hungry tonight, please come around. It is powerful to get to a realm where you no longer think about money. You have to believe it exists. We have so factored it that we believe that until you think, oh, where will I get this? Where will this come from? That you get to a point where you're only restrained is contentment and the voice of the Holy Spirit, not lack. There is such a place. And you may spend about an hour or so building your mind to believe. Because do you know for many people, and this has nothing to do with region. You hear people say, oh, this region like money. It's not true. Money is very necessary. Money is not everything. But in the area that only money can serve, nothing will replace it. The body of Jesus was hanging on the cross 
No prayer could bring it down. No fasting could bring it down. No warfare could bring it down. It took prosperity to bring the world down to get to the grave. Joseph of Arimathea, when you are not blessed, there are many things that will go wrong in your life. Young people now have high blood pressure, 21, 22, 23, and they have BP. It's unnecessary. I've prayed to God and there is a goal and there is an architecture that God is helping us to build in this ministry. To get to a point where everybody is more than blessed. As blessed as a nation, as an individual. So that you can have the time to serve the purposes of the kingdom. Are we together now? Many of you have good intentions. When you see the work of the Lord, you want to be part of it, but you are constrained. Many fights and quarrels. Do you know the top three reasons why marriages fail? I've taught it here in this house. Reason number one is finance. Reason number one, not demons, finance. So, I, I, I want you to have a healthy respect. Now, I know that there are people who have taught about finances and all they've done is just stimulating an obsession for acquisition of material things. Material things without a vision is a burden. It truly is a burden. Because any material thing you accumulate, there will have to be a system of maintenance. And sometimes it will be better off not having it. Are we blessed? I want to share with you what I will call the pathway to wealth. Just to buttress on what Ejimi has said. Many of the things that he said, I will just be repeating it. Like a guide, like a blueprint that can help you. I taught the law of honor yesterday and it is my sincere prayer that God will help us to respect people that have results. Our generation is a very arrogant generation that does not respect results. I never disregard a person and a people that I see results in. I've had the privilege to meet extremely wealthy people and when I sit there, I sit quietly. No matter what they say, whether I agree with it or not, I must honor them because they have results that I don't have some of it. Praise the Lord. So it is important to listen. It's important to understand. Another reason, let me quickly say, why we are teaching this is because we want to trust God to break this curse in Africa where people only prosper when they are old. In Africa, we don't do things fast. Speed is something that is not associated with Africans. If you buy a car and build a house, build an organization, build a successful ministry, say in your 20s, people look at you and say it's not correct. Are we together? The moment they see a young man or young people doing extremely productive things, an agitation begins to arise. Why should you have this car? How old are you? I'm 21. You must be a scammer. You must be a... No, 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 no. But when you are 65 and you are struggling to build a house, they say, no problem. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. But the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance, not for his children. You are a failure if all you have is for your children. According to Scripture, it must be transgenerational. Something that can last your children's children. Are we together now? Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Listen carefully. That delighted greatly in his commands. He says his seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever i will not spend my life chasing money it's a cause 
the price of my life, like a Jimmy shared, I was so blessed, is the blood of Jesus Christ. And I will not reduce myself to become a slave to mammon. Notice Jesus said something. He says you cannot serve two masters. So mammon is a master. He never said God and Satan. The only way to serve God comfortably is for one of the masters to become your slave. Because two of them are masters. And when you serve one, the other master will fight you. In ancient times, two kings cannot submit in another place. You have to behead one king and take the head into a city. And then you gain territory. You cannot allow money like that. And then you are serving God and money is there as a master. Like Cain and Abel, there will be a contention. And so when you conquer financial resources, the limitations that come with this system, then you will have the time to serve God. By now I'm sure you have seen and you are learning again that there is a system for wealth and abundance. This is what I want you to know. It is not one day, one day go better. It's if God wants to bless me, he will bless me. Those statements are very demonic. Are we together? Praise the Lord. So there is a system. Um, get my teaching, Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place. We have done all these preliminaries. The things that have to do with, you know, tithe, surrender, your heart and all of that. I won't go into it. I want to focus on, on the, the natural laws. I think that's where the body of Christ has a serious problem. I've shared with you here that both spiritual laws and the natural or physical laws of wealth and abundance are all kingdom laws. You are not at liberty to choose one. And leave the other. Don't forget the revelation that Ejimi shared. Because sometimes we men of God, we must take some responsibility. That, that Levitical advantage that was given to us. After this meeting now, someone can come with an envelope and say, Apostle, you bless me. Take. But someone may not easily meet you like that. Are we together now? So, there must be a strategy. It's the reason why many people are becoming preachers. Because they found out that the theology we sell makes only preachers to prosper. So, if you are a non-preacher, that privilege is not given to you. Don't forget that a preacher already has access to people who can see and appreciate his value. The work has been done. And so, they can honor and they can appreciate you. Every one of us can, should, and must prosper. If you don't prosper, let me be a bit harsh, forgive me. You are wicked. Poverty is wickedness. I'm being harsh deliberately. It's not an insult. I hate poverty for one reason. Because of what it does to the kingdom. If poverty did not affect the kingdom, I would not have any problem with it. All of these things. I've had the privilege to be with people at hospitals and I've had the privilege to see people dying daily of sicknesses. Are we together now? Some parents or people even request and say, just leave me to die because the amount of money that will be needed to save my life is unnecessary. The grave is full of many people who had gone before their time. Money killed them. So please make up your mind that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will get this thing once and for all. If you could get salvation, if you could get education, then you can get this finance. Ejimi was just teaching the basics to help you begin to jumpstart your life. But the assignment is more than just giving you cash flow. It's to give you stability. 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 Are we together now? It is very, very important. The laws. The physical laws. And then the physical laws of wealth and abundance. And then I'll tie it to a few principles on the pathway to wealth. There are three of them that I want to teach you. Number one, the law 
of value. Number one, the law of value. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, that the gift of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. I've, I've given this illustration again and again. Let, let me use it again. Please come, Sam. You people just in front, just come. Just come stand at my back. Everybody, please watch. Just stand facing the crowd. Compress yourselves together. Look at this. This is life and this is destiny. There is no space for you there. To believe that there is a space waiting for you is just an emotional way of encouraging you. It's a motivation. But the rude truth is that there is no space for you in life. This is the table of greatness. There is no vacancy and no vacuum for you. This is what the Bible says. The gift of a man will make room. Make room. There was no space for you. But God gave you something that created space. There was no space for Facebook on earth. There was no space for Twitter. There was no space for anything. They created space. They pushed time and added themselves. And the key is being valuable. Please write this. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Value is a measure of your usefulness. Value is a measure of your usefulness. To a person, to a territory, to a civilization. Value is a measure of your usefulness. Value is also a measure of your ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful. Not just solutions. Value is your ability to provide solutions. Please write. That are needed and useful. You can provide solutions. That's what HB was trying to teach. That you have to find out whether there is a demand for it. Are we together? Look up, please. So when we say you are valuable, it's an attempt to gauge the degree of your usefulness and the, the, the degree to which you can be desirable as far as the context of a civilization is concerned. If I say a Jimmy is valuable, listen. If I say Pastor Alpha is valuable, Sam is valuable. What I'm trying to say is that I have perceived their usability, their usefulness, as far as our civilization is concerned. Are we together now? Whoever, someone who sells pampas, for instance, that's a valuable person. But with respect to me and my money and my patronage, that value is useful, but it's not needed. I don't have anything to do with him. So if I'm the only person on earth, that person is valuable, but you will still be poor. Are we together now? Remember, I taught it here that there is a law. In business, we call it the law of compensation. And I'll state it for you. You know it, learn it. That our rewards in life will always be in exact ratio to three things. Number one, the demand for what you do. Number two, your ability to do what you do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing you. When you are easily replaceable by any standard, your value is low. Are we together now? So it is very, very important to understand your value will make room for you. Let me tell you this. The greatest value you will ever have is within you, not outside you. Thank God for real estate. Thank God for every other thing. But if every value, I don't trust anything outside me. The safest things are within me. Government can fight with you and collect your land and bully you and collect your land. Your shirt can tear. Your machine can spoil. But the thing that is in you has come to stay 
It is true. The most successful people are people who draw from within and create their possibilities without. It's important. So you must identify, write it down please, your inherent abilities. Number two, you must also build skill. I'm just rushing it. Skill is not inherent. It is an outsourced trait. You have to learn it. Your inherent abilities are there, but your skill is something that you have to learn. Identify your potentials. Your inherent abilities. Identify and build and develop skill. value. There is hope for your finances to the degree to which you are valuable and you recognize the value. If you do not recognize the value, you will never be able to rise. The scripture that Jimmy shared, there was a vessel with oil in it and the woman was saying nothing except and the oil was hearing her. I am in your house and every day you continue to pass me not knowing that the key to your tears is in that jar. There is this treasure in earthen vessel. God put value and put something in everybody. You must identify it. You must identify it. Value. Every value is spiritual. It is true. Within you from the realm of the spirit. And the goal is to draw it out. The law of value. Everyone please say I am valuable. Listen. If you are born again as a child of God. It is a double advantage. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit within you. Is real value. The Holy Spirit is the advantage. I've taught a little bit on true riches. That there are certain things that are real value in men. It is the capital that buys money. Wisdom, understanding, the anointing, a transformed mind. This is real value. Are we together now? If you are not valuable or you do not identify the value, then there is no possibility of rising financially. Let me teach you something very quickly. The spiritual laws of wealth are responsible for the arrival of financial resources. The physical laws are responsible for the management and multiplication. The spiritual laws are not responsible for increase. They are responsible for the coming of financial resources. So if all you know are the spiritual laws, resources will keep coming, but you will never be transgenerational. The physical laws are responsible to create the management systems and the increase that comes to you. Are we together? I've taught you here that there is only one way money comes. If you touch your pocket or you check your bank account and you ever see physical money there, only two things brought it. One favor, two value. That's the only way money comes. There is no... Com if you ever check... And find out that there was no money or there's no money around. Favor, value. It is the only official way money arrives. Never forget this. Favor, value. Favor, value. Favor, value. Are we blessed? So the law of value seeks to put in you an understanding that until you know and you are able to identify your potentials, there is no prospect of true wealth. Law number two, the law of productivity. Productivity is different from value. There is no need for productivity when you do not know you have value. But let me tell you this. Please look up. Just because you have identified your potentials, just because you are valuable, in that you are aware that you possess the skill to solve problems, it doesn't mean money will come automatically. Are we together? 
What is productivity? Productivity is refining your value and turning your value into products and services that are needed and useful. Until your value is refined and then turned into products and services that are needed and useful, you are not yet authorized for a reward. You are authorized for commendation, but not for a reward. So there are many valuable people around, but they cannot be rewarded because they are not productive. Are we together? Is someone learning something this morning? The foundation of your productivity is development. The moment you begin to develop your value, you are transiting from just being valuable to being productive. And the zenith of your productivity is when you have packaged your value into products and services that are needed and useful. I'm wearing a shirt here. This was a gift that was graciously given to me. A gentleman, I was, I was going to minister somewhere and he just made shirts with different things that he believes that I like. Now, I hope you know it's not rocket science to learn how to make shirts like this. But that person who can make shirts will remain poor. The difference between him and the one who did this is productivity. Are we together? Now, let me tell you this. You will still see these principles even in koinonia. I'm being fair and I'm being honest because many preachers don't know why they are prospering. They think they are prospering just because they are serving God. No. No. Your, your products immortalize your impact. You are finite as a person. You cannot be everywhere, but your products give you that sense of omnipresence. As we are standing right now doing this conference, there are thousands and millions of people around the world just knowing about Joshua Selman, listening to messages that are changing their lives. It's called productivity. It's not enough to be anointed. It's not enough to teach well. There has to be something that represents you. One of the principles of dominion is that your seed must rule for you to be in dominion. Are we together? So you are not productive if you have not given birth to something that represents you. There must be a representation of you in the market space. Otherwise you will remain poor. Please get this. They are very simple concepts. Many of you are blessed by what this gentleman is playing. And, but the problem is he's blessing you. And yet he's not increasing financially from it. You know why? Because with respect to our teaching, he's valuable. But he's not yet productive. You are productive when you can give something other than you that represents you. So I give myself to you. And you can still go with me in my products. I am there with you in your house, although not there physically. If this guy now turns this, develops himself, imagine that he produces this, volume one, soaking worship. Are we together? Or he just writes something, songs from the throne, volume one. Now he's productive. Because after listening to him, the next question is, how can I take you along? Do I always have to see you to be blessed by you? Are you seeing that now? And he can tell you there is a product. This is my CD. Now, it's true that the value is spiritual, but you will still pay for it. You will still pay for it. You carry that CD and someone else, you are marketing free for him. Because you will not listen to it alone. The moment you listen to it, you are saving him the labor of having to pay for many people to listen to him again. He's leveraging on your liking what he's doing. And someone says, where did you get this? He said, there's a young man called Elijah. And then like Ejimi shared, immediately in our digital age, the person will go online. Many of you are deceived by the fact that I'm not online. I'm not online, but I'm online. You see, you have to know this. 
I may not be online as a person, but everything I would have done as a person is represented online. So don't sit down and fool yourself and, and stop yourself from establishing a presence that the world will know. This is very important. I have to be very fair and honest to you because I don't want you to just remain down. I remember one hotel that I went to was a new hotel. I was just trying it out and then when I went there, I was happy because I believed nobody, you know, nobody, you know, would know me. I would have my time and have my space. And then I got in there and the day I was going to check out and leave, as soon as I came out, the receptionist was on her knees. She said, Apostle, sir. I said, hey, this thing now, what is all this one? When she saw maybe the people who were coming to see me and people were talking, immediately she went online. And when she went online, she tried to check the photo, Google images, and she, ah, he's the one who... You see that? If I type your name or your value, what face comes out? The face that comes out is the face that will get my money. And if that face is not you, you will not get it. Are we together? This is very powerful. It's not enough to be valuable. You must be productive. And the internet has granted so much opportunities. Grace, come. Stand up. You see this lady? Many of you are just seeing, some of you know her, she was from the school of ministry. This lady you see, export agricultural products from Joss down to Lagos and all of that. My smoothies are made from her agricultural products. This lady you are seeing is a very powerful lady as she's standing like this. She has her farm, she packages her strawberry, her mulberry. She started by working in a coffee shop. For some people who were oppressing her and making life miserable. When you are in Laban's house, you will never be rewarded adequately. God is a God of portions. You start in Laban's house, but he must give you your portion. Anybody that seeks to keep you depending on him for life is not blessing you. It is why evil people prosper. It is why Jews prosper. Because when you are working with them, you know you are an apprentice. The goal is never to remain under subjugation financially. The system that keeps you depending on someone else's creativity and all of this for your daily bread is not the worst, but it's not the best either. You can start there, but the goal is that you will have your own portion. I just, I'm using this example. She came in from Joss yesterday. Yesterday, right? I knew she was around by what happened in my house. When I saw a carton of strawberries and all kinds of berries, I said, that's it. Ejimi just taught you now. You eat meat all your life. You eat your time and eat your life into the grave. Eating excessive meat is not enjoyment. It's a way of dying fast. Praise the Lord. This is the lady. Do you know she's not the person with the greatest farm in Joss? I'm just giving you an instance. This lady. Every time I think of health and nutrition, I must think of her. Are we together now? Now, if, if I offend this lady, it's only a matter of days. I will remember what I stand to miss. Because I cannot farm. And I cannot do it. I will broker reconciliation fast. Are you getting what I'm saying now? She's productive. She's productive. She's productive. Many of you are saying, ah, that's my idea. That's it. You remain valuable. But this is productivity. Praise. Are you here? Praise from Joss. Did she come? Your sister? She's coming. Come, okay, you come and stand for her. Run, 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 run and come. Quickly, run. Let me tell you a little story. I'm inspiring you, we are going to pray. You see this lady? We had a session for our children um, on Sunday, powerful. And she runs something called Creative Kids. 
very very powerful platform that they have for children mentoring children and blessing them many of you have passion for children i saw some of your faces on facebook there but nobody has rewarded you because it has remained just at value now her younger sister this is this is where i want her younger sister came to zaria with a health product for all kinds of things detoxification and all of that because she's just known that look when you make money the next thing is to stay healthy so she wisely will just look for people around and she came with a product and then she met me and gave me the product in a jericho said this is for your health you're a man of god you're a preacher this would help you and i said oh interesting i've studied a little on wellness and all of that and when i took it i was so blessed when i got to joss I looked for that lady and I said, carry two and take to my parents. It's better than going to the hospital. Take it quickly and go and give my parents. Because the Bible says, he who does not walk should not eat. It's a health advice. If you know you are not going to walk fast for your health. And now my parents are retired and they are eating. So I said, please, quickly. Take this health product and go and give them. And when they gave them, my mom was so blessed. She was so impressed. I, this lady, her sister, when um, that was last month or so, I told her that I want all of this because I want to be taking it myself. She left just that morning and came to come and give me just, um, I think about four gallons of it. Beautifully packaged. Praise, praise what? Praise therapy. Praise therapy. Praise juice therapy. Are we together now? Let me tell you. It may not automatically make her a millionaire, but she will never sleep hungry. There is no spirit that will rise up and stop her from eating. Are we together? I'm just giving you an example of people scattered among us here. Let me surprise you. Emeka, stand up. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this guy? His company are the people that handle my designs in Lagos. I have a number of tailors. I have a number of tailors. I have four tailors in all. Most of the clothes that you see me wear, with the exception of a few, is his business that does it. Let me tell you the story of this gentleman. This gentleman was struggling and things were not going on well. And he listened to what message? Financial dominion. And when I spoke about value, he made up his mind to just pack up this for a while and reinvented himself, developed himself, and then he sold something that he knew I would not resist. He traveled from Lagos, brought it here to Zaria. When I started out in ministry, my tailors were in Zaria. I love them, but oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Imagine, I'm not, please don't feel bad if you are here and you are my tailor. I love you and God, God will bless you. But I'm challenging you. Now listen very carefully. They remained my tailors until. Now notice, he was not the first to give me clothes. There were many other people. They were valuable but not productive. There was no way of seeing them again. They would give me beautiful clothes. And I said, where is it? There's no way of reaching you. I want to order your clothes. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Not everyone is constrained with cost. There are people who have the liberty. And he came here. When he came, I prayed for him. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts and I'm grateful. And then in the night, hi, when God is on your side, Ba, He's on your side. I was sleeping at around one or two. True story. And the Holy Spirit told me, get up and try those clothes. <sighs> By this time, I now got up and I looked at it. I said, all these tailors that just sew this, a cloth, you don't know whether it's v-neck or round neck. You know, it's a and so on and so forth and then i took his cloth when i wore it uh, i said this this is calling me this is a language that is calling me 
I asked that they should look for him and bring him to my house the next day. Hmm. The king sent for Joseph and they brought him. There are, there are times, I want to tell you a few things. Because this gentleman now sows for top politicians in this country. One opportunity. Open doors. I don't know how many millions he makes in a month. Just because he left Lagos and came for this conference. A wise person. Because no matter how far you have gone, don't settle there. The grace that lifts you is also the grace that keeps you. Are you learning something here, please? When he did that, just a few adjustments and I told him, all right. And I tried to bless this gentleman. He refused. We were fighting. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm a giver. I'm also into your life. When he left, I said, this guy is so wise. And his life just changed. Completely. That's him today. I can point people here, but I'm just doing this deliberately to encourage you. Apostle, I am valuable. Thank you, but you will remain poor. You will only remain regarded, not rewarded. Are we together? It's very, very important. Please sit down. The law of productivity. 80 to 90 percent of the ministrations that I go for and the people that meet me do not know me as a person. But there is a product, the teaching. I remember those days. It was not popular at all to put messages on the internet. I remember the Holy Spirit told me. He said, don't sell the messages. Put them online and I will take it to the nations. And you cannot imagine what God has done with these teachings. You are not productive until your product or your service proves you are. You may be valuable, but you must have a product. You may not have a physical office, but you can have an online presence. Do you have a physical office? Please stand up, darling. Do you have a physical office? She doesn't. But boy, you need to see what this lady is doing. You can see me marketing and somebody is now thinking, I say, ah, I'll be your Zaria distributor. I'll send, send everything here. Please sit down. The amount of chairs and canopies that we spend every week in Koinonia here. Last year, when the finance department prepared the end of year finance, and I saw how much just one department spent, I got angry. I said, Lord, why should this money go out like that? By Friday, over 80% of the hotels in this city are completely shut because of what is happening. Not to talk of miracle services. And there are many valuable people seated here. Right now, throughout this retreat, there are some of you here that are food vendors. You are the ones feeding people when they fast. Productivity. 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 There are things you are passionate about that may not bring you reward. Leave them first. Follow what gives you reward. Then use your passion for philanthropy when you are rich. You don't bless the poor by being one of them. Are we together? When I learned this, I saw the reason why many gifted people, many gifted people were not rewarded. I kept challenging the worship team. And I told them, I said, guys, let me tell you sincerely, and I submit to you, by the privilege of God's grace, we have some of the finest worshippers in this nation, in this place. It's true. It's true. You go around the body of Christ and you hear their worship songs. So many people have listened to their songs from Koinonia messages. But over 80% of them do not have a product. Imagine that they had something now 
that in this conference we can say this is available. After the grace, you go to the back, here is so 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 person CD. Are you seeing now? Millions of naira locked up in the realm of the spirit. The womb that will deliver that baby is called productivity. Praise the Lord. This is very important. I remember when several people started calling and saying, um, Apostle, we want to send seeds from abroad. People want to send seeds and we didn't have a domicile. And it was something that could be easily done. I don't know how I got that careless that we could not. I mean, it, it didn't take more than 24 hours to just have domiciliary accounts. And for a, a while, those people will go through the rigor of looking for exchangers in Nigeria that they may pay into the account and then all of And that rigor, one day, let me tell you what happened, what challenged us. You can see that there are people God are destined to bless us, but are not being productive by going a step further to have dollar and pound and euro accounts short change prophecy. The oil stops flowing when there is no vessel. You have to make space for it. What happened was the manager of GT Bank, somebody just got up like that and did a transfer and they didn't know where to put it. The person just was and said, make sure it reaches Koinonia. I got a text from the manager was, I think we went to minister somewhere and he said, sir, this is it. We don't know where to put this money now. I said, open an account for us. Open domiciliary, pounds, door, everything. Open it. The moment that account was opened, me, myself, I became afraid. I said, my God. So this is what everybody has been waiting for. The day that that account was launched here, it was like a charm. You see, I'm being open to share these things with you. Imagine how many blessings are locked up just waiting for productivity. You think they don't like your song till the day the world hears it. Everybody say, I receive grace to be productive. Say, I receive grace. Don't go online when you are not ready. Now that I'm talking, some of you are ready to put nonsense online this night. Don't disgrace yourself. The world does not have that level of patience to tolerate mediocrity. So make sure that if you are going to do something, you know what you are doing. Quality and content. Word based and that it is worth lifting and blessing. Don't sit down with nothing. There is always something you can do. There are some of you here, by the grace of God and in the name of the Lord, with what God is doing in your life now, tomorrow, nobody will even talk, feeding hungry people, you will, you will build the equivalent of hotels, but just for the gospel, and say, this one is for the gospel. I heard about a gentleman who died in the mission field one time. And it pained me. I said, how much did it take to preserve this gentleman's life? Is the gospel a cause? Why should a man go and die because of a trivial something? Let me tell you this. What we are telling you is the future. It's not today. Those who have eyes to see can prepare for the future. Those who don't have eyes will be the victims of it. A day is coming. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Your excelling in life financially may no longer depend so much on jobs again, but on your productivity. Computers and artificial intelligence has come to stay. It is not going anywhere. And like Jimmy shared, every entrepreneur is out to cut cost. That means cutting any head that stands on the way of that cost. If 50 people receive two two hundred thousand and one software managed by one man who can receive one million will solve the problem i love you but you are going simple i remember when this down on me seriously my blessed sister i love her so much she was working in one of the telecoms and it wasn't like it was the best of conditions wonderful very sincere loving lady and they just said they were downsizing and with all my anointing, with all the grace, fellowship of the Holy Ghost, this is how they just pushed my sister out of the way. That thing pained me and I said, no, this is it. 
one day you see sometimes god wakes you up by just letting you he can let life teach you a lesson that you will stand up and say this is it this it will not repeat itself again when i saw that thing my heart broke i said how many people are on their way imagine that a husband and wife are in the same place and they love god and they have three or four or five children and suddenly both of them are downsized in one day their whole lives return to shambles but there are people rising that will feed kings because even the king is fed from the field so no one is immune when you have value kings must eat from you it says that gentiles come to your light yes i studied billy graham a lot because he was not the only evangelist on earth but what gave him access to kings every president regardless of your spiritual conviction must honor billy graham and i said lord grant me the grace not just to minister the word but to speak to kings you want to speak to kings you must learn the protocol of kings are we together let me surprise you daddy sir please don't be offended would you rise sir yes let's celebrate our father now this our father here is the national coordinator of CEM. Am I right, sir? That man. This man decided to make up his mind, take his reputation, keep it aside, and come for the school of ministry and dedicate six months. The national coordinator of CEM. I'm ready to invent my life. I'm, I'm showing you people who are defying these things to say at my age nobody taught me but even now oh abraham even now there can still be a way out are we together i can point people again and again who have already seen the future and have known that if i do not own the future by subscribing to what god is doing then i may have to sell my children in the bible the track record of eating children and destroying their destinies has always been there two women they ate one child they were about to eat another child hunger always takes israel to egypt very very important everybody say productivity let me give us the last key thank you for your patience the law of exchange please sit down sir the law of exchange so i've taught you the law of value identifying your usefulness your gift your skill number two productivity developing and refining those abilities into products and services that are needed and useful and then the law of exchange in business we call it the art of selling the ability to compel people to need you the ability to persuade the attention and the resources of people the law of exchange you see it is at the point of exchange that transaction that resources come to you so come Sam Sam is valuable bring bring your notebook Sam is valuable. Sam is productive. He has a product. But he's still poor. This is Sam's money with me. God has already told him, I've released your wealth. And the wealth is on earth. The law of value has been kept. The law of productivity has been honored. But the law of exchange is why he's still poor. Although productive. Are we together now? He must know how to reach me so that I will collect his product in exchange for this. This was the Lord that brought Jesus to the earth. It was not enough for the Father to intend. It was not enough for the Son to be willing. There had to be a system of conversion where the Word became flesh. And then when that happened, even at Gethsemane, there had to be a system of exchange so that he would become the cause 
the second Adam. He was not born the cause. An exchange made that happen. Listen to me. If you violate this law, you will remain shockingly poor. You don't have to sell to exchange. You just have to get the people. When I say sell, I mean that you don't have to put a price. Otherwise, people like us, who don't sell anything, for instance, you understand? I cannot come for a meeting and then I tell you, you must give me one million. You must give me 500,000. In that regard, I am not selling, but I am selling. You see that now? It is very true. I will be a wicked person to not teach you this. Because that is the final system of arrival of the resources. It is at the point of exchange that the millionaires are made. It is at the point of exchange that the resources reach you. Many of us have taken it a step further to be productive. But you have not been able to get those who need it to come for it. And it is until they come to your light that they come with their gift. It was when the queen of Sheba heard about what Solomon was doing. Then she came with gifts. Solomon didn't sell anything, but he sold something. He sold excellence. Are we together? The same thing that I teach today as a man of God. That sometimes I taught years ago. And then while I'm struggling to get a bike. The people that invited me will come and stand close to me like a bride. And just bring out 1,000 and say, sorry sir, I hope we were really blessed. As if you are bribing somebody in a federal government job. The same thing I'm teaching today. And someone can bring what is the dream of someone else. And bring it. Why? Because of the law of exchange. When God was telling me to put these messages online. And let it go free. It looked like God, what are you saying? It was not about it. He was saying, I want the ears of those who need this anointing. I want the ears of the generation that needs to hear you, to hear you. Until this thing works, hear ye him. Hear ye him. Patronize ye her. That is when wealth begins to come. Where's K Strings? It's not here. He didn't come this morning. K Strings was anointed. Great guy. Productive. But one person, Nathaniel Bassi, got to hear his song and called him and said he should come. And God has helped that young boy now. Many of these people you see seated right now have their various albums and all of that in, in process now. Very soon it will come out. And before you know it, you may not even be seeing them on Friday again. Ah, where is this one? This one is in Brazil. And he said, I know them. No, 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 no. Are we together? Until your world knows you are there and they know why you are there, it is an error for them to come to you. What for? They have to know you are there and they have to know why you are there. By the grace of God, Many people continue to come here because by His Spirit, He has given us the grace to brand our impact. We are not only impactful, the impact has been branded. The name Koinonia is not a revelation, it's a brand. It's a brand. It's a brand. When you mention Apostle Joshua Selman, you don't think relationship and marriage. No. I know a lot about finance, but you don't even think finance. You brand your impact. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The art of selling. You don't always persuade men by talking to them. You persuade men by talking to their needs. Talking to their hearts. Talking to their hunger. There are times they don't want to hear, but their needs will answer for you. And say, don't mind him, we are here. We need you. How can you ever... Be poor and lack. When you rise to a point where you are so needed, you are so useful, 
Do you know how many people will be blessed when you learn this? I've given you my story. That people go to our family house looking for my mother and say, wow, this is Apostle's mom. Mommy, we brought this for you. Thank you for giving birth to this son. I believe my mother's assignment was to give birth to me. Who will be proud that you came? I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, I say it with all humility and I say it in the name of the Lord. Part of the reasons why we are effective in the pursuit of the things of God is because by His grace, He has given a measure of rest in the pursuit of this mammon. You will never serve God chasing money. I don't go to minister today because I'm looking for money from the place. Otherwise, I would choose where to go to and reject other places. There are campuses that will invite you. They barely even have the money for your flight. But you know that souls need to be saved there. But if money becomes your governor, it will lead you outside the will of God. There are people like Ejimished who have no business getting married to certain unbelievers. But the reality of the needs will compel them to say, no problem, we will manage. And their spiritual lives go down. The law of value the law of productivity then the law of exchange and god has put the internet as a blessing to make that happen in one day one day god has given us a measure of influence to assist us this lady now that i've spoken to you think is a joke everywhere you hear this message around the world you will hear her that's it one word it doesn't take so much to endorse you but favor is when preparedness meets opportunity opportunity it's not very difficult for god to lift you it is not very difficult for god to announce you when a season where god is announcing people and blessing people and helping people and honoring people let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if you pay attention to the things that have been taught this morning, they may look like basics, but they are keys that anybody can pick right where you are. You can tell yourself, Lord, right where I am. I've seen poverty and struggle. I've seen divorce in my family because of this. And my life cannot continue like this. When you make up your mind like the prodigal son, I will arise. It's within your power. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. Out of the ashes of my dying today, I see the breaking of a brand new day, in which the name of the Lord alone is glorified. I see the breaking of a brand new day. I may not have the time to talk about the other things, but I think this is good. This is good enough for us to pray. Every one of us here needs to engage one or more of these laws. And you will wave poverty goodbye and it will wave you back and say, go. Sitting down to superstitiously wait for a breakthrough is deception. You will sit there forever and your children will join you again and again. Whether you are a preacher whether you had the privilege to be educated or not, there is an opportunity for your rising. That from these ashes, from all of this that you are doing, you can arise. Some of you are yet to discover that value. You are not praying in tongues for nothing. The Holy Spirit is not a cause. It's not just something that came to make you a Pentecostal. The Holy Spirit is the advantage that treasure that is in earthen vessel put
put by God to turn your life around. To turn everything around. To turn your ministry around. Listen, men may laugh at you. Men may be sarcastic, but it's only for a while. You can't laugh at results for too long. Your foolishness will become obvious. It's a retreat. But we also need to be empowered. Oh God, when will you help me? The day you engage this. The day you bring something in my hands. For as long as there was five loaves and two fish, it was alright to feed 5,000 people. The multiplication is always possible when you bring something. He didn't bring flour and, and uh, raw fish. No, the young lad had processed flour, bread, and fish that was already roasted. So it was easy to bless it. If you bring raw fish, God will teach you how to cook it. He won't call anybody to buy it. But when you present it, you can stand and say, My world, come and see like a trophy what His Majesty has done upon my life. You are a man of God here. Let me tell you, ministry is not the reason to be poor. And it doesn't have to be by manipulation and all of that. You can stay with the Spirit. While you are praying, you are increasing in wealth. You are not praying in tongues just so that your capacity is open. While you are studying, when others are sleeping and you are studying, you are making... This is... Remember your children. When you are tired, you remember. I, my father could not make this sacrifice. But I'm making this sacrifice for the sake of my children and my children's children. And while you are praying, Shakatos kabaratos yata. The anointing of the Spirit is rising until the day you see you are valuable. Now you have become productive. You have something real. Then God will create the platform. He will put all your destiny helpers in front of you and give you the mic and say it's your season of appearance. One sermon and what God will do in that meeting, you will never have rest again. Let us begin to come from all over the world. Listen, let me tell you this. By the grace of God, when you have worked on yourself and you can say in all fairness that what I have will not bring me shame, don't be afraid of letting the world know you are there. It is not, it is not pride to let the world know you are there. Jesus said, let's go to other cities. They need to know that I came, the Son of God. Today, by God's grace, as God has helped us, we are not ashamed to tell the world that we respect and we honor, but never to the point of intimidation. Because such as we have, there is something God has put. Is someone ready to pray? We are going to spend a few minutes to cry passionately to the God of heaven who is the lifter of men. Prosperity is giving evidence to the blessing. That the blessing is upon your life and you do not frustrate the grace of God. You give evidence. You engage these principles. Lift up your voice and begin to pray in the spirit. Please. Outside, pray. You are paying the price outside. But don't be ashamed of your sacrifice. You pray. Shela baruza sika tabranda gada balakutiash. Ena mana da 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 da. Shala barada gada brani gede baladaba. Hallelujah. Listen. Now unto him who is able to do. So we are not doubting his ability. Don't ever ask God, can you do it? That's not the language of faith. Now unto him who is able to do, exceeding, abundantly, far above all we ask or think, listen, according to the power, not that lives, that works. The fullness of the Godhead lives in you, but it's the dimension that works. That is released to be a blessing. According to the power that worketh in us. Koinonia, let me tell you this. 
If you listen to this that you are taught today, believe me, it will not take long. You know what to do now. You are not sitting down saying, Lord, what do I do? You know what to do. If you are not valuable, you stay with the Spirit of God. Like Ejimi has shared, you find out, Lord, what is this? What, wh where is that rod in my hand? Wherewith I will do signs and wonders. And God will tell you. There are many things that you have. But one thing is needful. One thing. One thing. That God will anoint. And you go and develop yourself. If it means to take courses and take certifications for the purpose of credibility, do it. Do it. Hallelujah. Do it. It's powerful. Our friend TK is here. TK read chemical engineering, first class chemical engineering. But because of his passion, he went to Lagos Business School to reinvent himself again. Reinvent himself again. Don't say I studied this and that. If you don't need it, relearn. Relearn. Sit down. Go to the internet and relearn. Reschool yourself. You have to learn this. Jimmy was the best student in his, in his class. Industrial design. But he looked at it. I knew from day one that other thing was just to finish it fast. And he had to relearn himself because he, had, he was business all over from head to toe. There are many people who sit down and continue to say, my course is not valuable. Make yourself valuable. There is no such thing as being educated again. You are either learning or you are out. I'm educated is just a philosophical way of encouraging yourself. Reinvent yourself. Stay with the Spirit of God. You are a man of God. Don't be lazy. You are not talking to children. Ministry now is not when you just come and dump anything on people. As you are talking, they are checking your statistics on the internet. As you are talking, they are looking at what you are saying. If you want to teach kings, you must learn the kings are not poor people. When everybody was coming to Solomon, the queen of Sheba did not come. Kings don't come to your light. They come to the brightness of your rising. Someone lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, enough is enough. I challenge myself in this business session. It's time to rest. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, open my eyes to see that with every gift you have given me, which one of them will own the future? Lift your voice and pray. Show me. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will take that which is of me and he will give it to you. He will show you things to come. What may be relevant today may not be relevant in 10 years. Lord, open my eyes. You have given me so many things. Which of them owns the future? So I don't waste my time shadow boxing on things that may never hold relevance. Shabarakatabako selebala Kapranda katabaru segetebalatos Enkratabaran suzia hashadabalakata Pray, Koinonia. The Lord is lifting your life to make you a praise to the nations. Shiva Shalapo Zasikata. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Wealth and riches shall be in his house.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, whatever price I need to pay to be the best, you have to destroy mediocrity. Mediocrity is a terrible spirit. You are neither here nor there. I like you to pray. Grace to be exceptional. What have you given me, oh God? The grace to sharpen it. If the axe head be blunt, it says, then much labor, much effort is required. But wisdom is profitable to direct. Grace to be competent. Grace to be productive. Grace to be exceptional. Someone is praying. Someone is praying your way into a realm of strange abundance. There's no space for mediocres in today's world. There is no space for average. A little here, a little there. It will not hold water. Shebarakatavos. Excellence in ministry. Excellence in business. Excellence in career. Excellence in the works of my hands. Oh, I give myself no rest till I become a reference. Challenge yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you get to the point of productivity, then you are ready to cry for his assistance. Ah! Because my brothers and my sisters, the next prayer we are about to pray, you see, when God is ready to lift you, he will take you where your helpers are. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. So God will position men, position people, and then he will now bring you. That's going to be your prayer. Father, the kings of my industry, the gatekeepers, I pray that you will strategically place me in the midst of them. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. That he will put you in the midst of the men and women that have both the recognition and the fortitude for reward. I call forth my helpers, the lifters, the announcers, in the name of Jesus. They are positioned around me. They recognize and discern the grace of God upon my life. Hallelujah. Listen. The realm of wealth and greatness, permit me to use the word, is like a secret cult. You have to be ushered by someone who is there. The same way you can't anoint yourself. There must be a hand that holds you and says, come up. Come up. You may be ready, but standing there. Joseph was ready. Pharaoh was there, but the connector was missing. Listen, he told the wine presser, if you get to the king, speak for me. There are times that you don't have a voice at the gate yet. You will need the favor of the person who is already at the gate. It is your works that speak for you at the gate. Sometimes you may not have your voice. Who is already at the gate of my destiny? Lord, grant grace that they speak for me. Grant grace that they endorse what you are doing in my life. Grant grace. May they hear my song. May they hear my sermon. May they see my product. May they see my work as a lecturer. May they see my presentation. 
as a career person lord may they hear about me let it be noised abroad that i am here my destiny share me i am here do not bypass me hallelujah the final prayer two three minutes and we're done listen to me the last thing you are going to pray for is lord i will prosper even as my soul prospers that's the rule the prosperity that god brings is that you prosper even as your soul when satan comes to cause you to prosper you will prosper but your soul will suffer because if all we have is just the wealth the cars the money the influence and all we have ends here we are all men most miserable there are people who started loving god well but because they did not understand that this babylonian system will give you prosperity and take your soul don't confuse what we are teaching here the bible says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures the richer you are the more you are in love with god the wealthier you are the more your heart is with god that you train your children no spoiled kids under my roof prosperity is not a cost you will call upon the god of your father The nation of Israel were instructed to train their children. If they ask you this and that, tell them this is what happened. When you are wealthy and your children go to hell, you fail. You fail woefully. Are we together? Because there is a growing trend that the more people get wealthy, the more they are ashamed of God. You will get to certain business fairs. That's why it's good to enter that gate from the gate of value. If you beg your way into that gate, you will live by the terms of those already there. That your heart, you can see millions of dollars, millions of naira, increased influence, ministry everywhere. And you can stand and say, Lord, none of these things will get to my heart. They were given... To assist your remaining in my heart. Not to replace you. Ah. Yeshua Hamashiach Yeshua Hamashiach Komina Nakane One more time hey, Komina Nakane Komina Nakane Komina Nakane Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashiach the Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one it will not happen as you have seen I don't know what I'm saying but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that it will not happen as you have seen I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen it will not happen as you have seen in the name of jesus christ praise the lord so many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies here and there men and women of god all over the world continue to speak the counsel of god the word of god to individuals but then we notice that people receive these prophecies and most now let me tell you sincerely most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass and tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong 
and then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic listen very carefully and the place of the word of god because there are people for instance who have seen things in visions in dreams or have received prophetic words from anointed people genuine people filled with the holy spirit and these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of god some of them may have been negative prophecies and they have remained helpless believing that just because a man anointed by god accredited by god made a pronouncement and utterance to them it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen so we're dealing with the prophetic today and i pray that god will grant us understanding so let's go very quickly our time is gone read with me verse 18 everyone one to read this charge i commit unto thee son timothy uh-huh according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received, may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic the bible says very clearly and i think that i will just um solve that once and for all in first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 let the word of god speak once and for all first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20 if you're a christian please read with me one to read despise not prophesying one more time this is a warning do not despise prophesying do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing god and living a meaningful life that means that the bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic okay so we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic and the bible says to not despise it that means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying you don't have to fight anybody you don't have to create trouble but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer there is a place listen carefully there is a place for the prophetic there is a place for prophesying are we together when it comes to the prophetic the bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy do you agree with me second peter chapter 1 and verse 19 please second peter chapter 1 and verse 19 second peter chapter 1 and verse 19 it says we have also 
a more sure word of prophecy when you read in context coming down you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy it says where unto ye do well that ye take heed now listen very carefully so he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture. It says to also take heed as well. So do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men. And that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture. The prophecy of scripture we call it. Are we together now? Yes. The character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same. Please listen very, very carefully. So the Bible is prophetic. The words that are written in scripture are prophetic. The words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of God to you, real time, is also prophetic. But in terms of superiority, please listen. They are not all the same, although engineered by the Spirit of God. The Bible lets us know, please look at me, that the prophecy of Scripture and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the Spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable more dependable are we together it attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture that means that if given an option for both of them the bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty it tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture are we together there are many reasons for this and that's that's not that's not where i'm going tonight my goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray the bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times the word seven there means complete that the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable listen the bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. 
There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasha. All of these books are extra biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predetermined counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates, if you allow me to use that word. The Bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing God. Listen very carefully. I'm showing you the reasons why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy. God has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the most sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire. Remember, I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now, remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So, we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then... It never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said, by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. 
called everything. I went back and after five years we were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you. Because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. Most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs so many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus say it who now? Talk to me. I mean, we're Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrest. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord verse 3 and said remember now O Lord I beseech thee 
how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, O oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and and a man, a man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. Please listen. I have added now 15 days to your, to your years, verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord. That what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember. Thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back. Verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he had spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence that something I have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord and prophesy to you that by next week, five of you will be in America. And by next week, one person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy 
and a negative one that happens there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy please listen to me and learn this all personal prophecies write it down please all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God all all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization all prophecies there is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on his own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice, notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I would not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself. And then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet and look at a scripture and lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you and say Jesus I hear you I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me there is no witch in hell hear me if you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cater of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of his relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative 
or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture. Salvation is the freest thing we know. And the condition is that if thou shalt believe with thy heart, talk to me koinonia, and thou shalt confess with your mouth, that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell. You had the word, but you still went to hell. This action part, this condition part, is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies. But heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored. She was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I receive the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that. Do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus. Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately. And demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted. And prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan 
coming back in heaven to join the seraphs you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written it's a written judgment are we together another written judgment the eternal doom of those who reject christ the antichrist and his cohorts these things are written the only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it but you cannot stop it number three the reality of causes and yokes on earth is written ordinances were intentionally put the only thing you can you can't stop causes on the earth no they are there the only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it you can say minus me and my family but to say minus it out of the earth no sir it is not given to you you can cast out demons from your life from a church from your vicinity but not from the earth there is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said i behold i give you power remember scripture power so i have that authority i've been risen with christ above all thrones dominions and every name that is named you gather all the demons in one place catch them and let there be peace on earth no that does not happen i, I don't know if you understand what i'm saying yes the number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition the condition for actualizing the prophecies the other side of this is that you can change any prophecy write it down please don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed, you are a foolish and stupid son. I know a woman, years ago when I was in secondary school, there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry, continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him. She said he will stop stealing only when rat stops stealing. Let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him is there hope for that boy yes sir there is jesus the prophet that he can look at it that even the lawful captives is it in your bible a more sure word of prophecy even the lawful captives can be delivered so you can find this truth and believe it but you just get up and say wow i found it even the lawful captives shall be delivered i'm delivered hallelujah you are not delivered mm -mm -mm -mm. you are only informed about deliverance that is possible are you seeing how we mock ourselves we just find it out oh, i receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah i'm done and right after then you will see what they said should happen happen there are conditions what made the captive lawfully captive and what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated and you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility it's true charismatics this is where charismatics have failed 
the excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance people just jump here and there things will happen he shall keep the imperfect peace yes and no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling you go and look for trouble and see what happens it will look as if angels are no longer there so what have you, I, I, I get what i'm saying now yes you can choose to end your life now today right now you go and stand you go and stand on the road let me be prophesying in jesus name you will live long i stand under the oil god has given me while you stroll foolishly you use your will that is more powerful that's the same will that brought jesus into your heart jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in and you stand in front of a door and a truck the spirit of death is an opportunist he looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible so he's scouting around zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a t-junction carelessly he will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed he will not see you he will come and clear you you are dead now resurrection is a different law altogether we can now start but as far as that seed is concerned you are dead hallelujah let me tell you something that happened to a young man i'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here it's a big mistake that the boy made he had some carryovers and um he saw me in a dream <coughs> according to him i appeared in a dream and i told him i said everything is all right now watch this now everything is all right very consistent with what god will say <laughs> are we together the same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I'm rich till they became old. Nothing happened. <laughs> and then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything. And he just sat there and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman. No, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct now you see that word was at the mercy of a condition are we together now is it not when your lecturer sees your script now you have done your own part to at least write the spirit of god can now move upon that man to show you mercy mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted the same way the bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land that house will not be built someone will look at you and say speak to me say I, I, the same thing i told you last year is what god is showing me again the day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand one tipper and pour there by faith what happens that's your five loaf and two fish you are ready for a miracle a destiny helper can now come and say what's going on here say I'm, I'm starting life i'm pushing this thing by faith say, really come to my office tomorrow now your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression are we together yes your marriage shall be a blessing your children surround your table you will see your children's children you are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady god will never that prophecy will never come to pass are you getting what i'm saying now there are many guys that just cross their legs i saw myself i saw my children i saw a jeep here i saw a resort center here you are dreaming let me tell you this prophecy will never come to pass because god demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen you have ignored that law and so that prophecy will never come to pass are we together your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together. If the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy, you are in trouble. You must take understanding. You must take what? Understanding. So that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line, prophetic thinking and slap her that's the end of that marriage in spite of the fact that the bible says you will see your children's children 
prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send the text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it, and I saw a ghastly motor accident, or I saw a plane crash, and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? Improve a little. You will be surprised. You will think if Satan is taken out of the earth, suddenly the poor will be rich. Suddenly. you. In fact, let me tell you, there are many people who that God uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand God. You will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when Satan is out. Because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction. Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, I, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the world. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believed that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken. Bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen. No, sir. Whether a man is fake or real, the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it. Did you hear what I said? Whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real, once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy, your result, I guarantee you, will be the same. It's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. 
And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multimillionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -mm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? He say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. 
You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career, and so on and so forth. Every one of them can tell you the different units, the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to. Where the prophetic was needed, they opened themselves to that dimension. Where prayer was needed, they opened themselves. Where diligence was needed, they opened themselves. Like the ingredients of a, of a meal, everything was combined together to equal success. This is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. This is prophecy, the correct approach to prophecy. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to what? Observe and to faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says should be done to see that result. When the rich man came to Jesus, he said, good master, what must I do to be saved? Apostle, the devourer is coming every time. I can't hold ten naira like this. It's as if there's a bag. Now, let me tell you this. I can stand as a man of God. Please watch this. We're going to pray shortly. I can stand as a man of God and God can show me a revelation. I can look at, for instance, come Sam. It's looking sharp and smart. Now watch this. You see how sharp and smart Sam is looking. Imagine that God opens my eyes. Now the way prophetic things are interpreted, you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly. Because God will open my eyes now. Do you know what I will see? I will see this. I will see Sam holding a basket and I will see water being poured in that basket and going down. That can be a template that God is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life. Are we together now? So he uses because God speaks in pictures. The Bible calls it similitudes. It is not only words. God speaks in pictures. So when I see that now, watch this. I can say, ah, Sam, all that I see, your finance is going down. You say, yes, it's true. Everything going down. You say, yes. You don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word. No. Remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking. So the real captivity is the financial decisions. His understanding about God's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking, that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him. So to really help Sam, after prophesying to him, I'll say, Sam, I need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance. Number one, let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking. Number two, let's look at the understanding. Let's look at what you are doing. You are not producing anything. You are not, you are not diligent. You are not exchanging anything for value. Number two, your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level. Now, you are closing that door permanently. Remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny. When Sam goes back now, number one, he will pray and rebuke that spirit. But number two, he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly. Are we together? That teaches him that it is all right to move small in life. If all you have is a shoe of 300 naira, it is not a mockery on your reputation. An understanding you had before called it shame. 
What you have now received calls it process. Because of that now, when the devourer comes as usual, a fortification has been built through knowledge. Now the prophecy of Sam, God is changing your life, can now happen. Because favor can now come. A system of preservation has come. This is how Sam is warring with this prophecy. Otherwise, Sam can kneel down and say, yes, sir, I will speak to him. The destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket. So here's what happens in church. And I say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word. Bringing understanding to the saints, bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic. Many times we, we feel embarrassed even as, ma as men of God to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word. We would prefer... To just begin to move. Imagine that I, I, I come here now and the power of God begins to break out. I mean, it's easy for you to see that this is that Joshua Selman. You know, the Bible said this is that. So when you bring a visitor, you say, I told you. It will reach 10 minutes. When it comes up, you'll be flying. I, you doubted me. Now you see it happening. But sometimes when you sit down, you see the way believers are embarrassed and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that each I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing. You know, it just it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotam before you come dotam prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment oh with with jesus joy that oil will come and set your life in order Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, yeah, quickly prepare the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come. And since your rate of change is slow, it will take a long time. So when you say, God help me, God says, I'm, I'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension. What do you understand about pastoring thousands of people? What do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression? Growth. Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. 
the emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. As prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people. And they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so that in my entire paternal lineage, sincerely, I think aside from my dad, by the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, Above all of this thing, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They pray. I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in a meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it will december will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened but if someone makes up his mind like timothy that i'm going to war a good warfare prophecy has been sent ahead of me lord what do i need to do show me your greatest prayer in this season can be is not just show me your ways lord show me the part i have to play 
show me what do i have to do oh god to change my financial story i've desired fresh oil i have fasted and i have prayed what is the key to the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man i found out the key to keep the holy spirit close to a man because i knew that the nature of the ministry that god had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and i didn't want theory lord show me what keeps the holy spirit close to a man think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you and don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you no huh. spirit of the living god i found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need but what do i need to do as the recipient Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let me tell you this. I trust God's way. One of the secrets of my life is that I trust the way of God. Most of us have allowed education, intellect, to corrupt the potency of the ways of God. I believe God. I believe God. I remember when the Lord gave instructions here for miracle service. Foolishly and childishly did it. Everything he says to do, you do. When God declares anything here, we go after him foolishly. I remember a Jimmy's here, he will tell you. When the Lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online, audio. Audio message that is not very clear. People online, those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something. They don't have that time. You break it into sections. And someone sits down for two hours, 30 minutes, listening to volumes and volumes of a message. My brothers and my sisters, it is not. Let me tell you, you, you will be shocked at the power of God that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it. Show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of God or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from God to understand the requirements and do it. I show you a man who you're speaking against, you're cursing against, you're wishing against. is a waste of time. My confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come. Challenges can come. But you are as assured of victory as you are assured of Christ sitting on his throne. My life has no fear. I sincerely mean it because I have found out. I found how to commit God. You commit God in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. Buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them. You have potential for rice. That's prophecy. But that rice will never, never be prepared there. At best, you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice. But then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients. And within a short time, as short as an hour, you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. 
God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous. From the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But when Jesus walked upon the earth, they tried to distract him. And he said, no, 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 no. My meat is to do the will of him that has sent me. Jesus had an option to abort salvation. When he was at Gethsemane, he cried and prayed. Can you take this cup off me? But he said, nevertheless, my will, not my will, but yours be done. And when he took that cross, it was not an angel carrying it. He was carrying it, feeling the weight. The moment he wanted to throw it, he remembered. He remembered. Man will not be grafted through me to be seated. I, 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 if I throw this now, I cannot call many sons to glory. Let me tell you this and I confess to you. There were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me. Because I saw the days coming. I knew that they were days of joy and rest. And no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north and he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit when you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking to you? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream that the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream that an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream, 3.22 a.m. In that dream, I saw knife. I saw all of that and you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream. Prophecy seeking expression in your life. Like Hezekiah, there's something you would have done about it. Hey, everybody in this house, turn every plate upside down. I have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away. And then you get up and pray. There are many things I see that the devil wants to bring upon people, upon the ministry, upon my life. There are people who send me text messages sometimes, Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it, but it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. 
there are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream and in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend that when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. You begin to pray when you engage the truth of God's word. I choose life. I'm the head of this home. My children may be too small to choose life, but I stand as a covering. I choose life. When they are in school, I choose life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I've taught you this thing. Listen, if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting down. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to twelfth. The other one from 4 to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakatoselekata. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, And you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body, physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind we want to dwell under the shadow of your wing over every challenge in my life blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wing blow blow say Listen, everything you see in your dream is prophecy, seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy, seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. Is what you don't want that you will see happen. 
Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Ekete Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood, get my message on priesthood, is that men become men of prayer. Not just prayer in terms of petition, but legislators of spiritual reality. Anything you sit and watch will happen. Did you hear what I said? Listen. There was no record of Job praying for himself. There was no record of any man praying for Job. The devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family. He prayed for his children. It's true that he feared God. It's true that he ensured evil. But that's not the seed for deliverance. You must know how to pray and engage. Listen, let me tell you. Let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come. Don't say I'm not a member of prayer band. I'm not a member of this and that. The times that we live in, let me tell you, it requires men with the spirit of Issachar. It's a man who had an understanding of the times. Otherwise, you can confess, I shall not die. And that will sweep you like a chicken. You must have the eyes that see. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life, my family, my finances. Please pray, pray. I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life, I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I reject you. I speak the word, the most sure word of prophecy. I shall not die, but leave the head, not the tail, above only, not beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'd like you to find someone to agree with you. Everything God said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with God's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens. Lift your voice and cry. I command that it must come to pass. I war a good warfare in the realm of the spirit. I decree and I declare the joy, the peace, the prosperity, the blessings, the anointing upon my ministry, upon my life. I declare the power. 
powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me I command the release by the power of the word of God pray few minutes and we are done you are enforcing prophecy Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Yahweh. Whatsoever thou shalt lose, binding and losing thoughts of allowing and disallowing. Are we together now? Please listen to me. Please listen. Listen. That everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power, it must be released now, not tomorrow. Now, lift your voice and begin to pray. Shakata parokotos, Repetatatos, Koinonia, pray, pray prophecy to manifestation, pray prophecy to manifestation. E paruko to shekete kete kete, e prekete lekete mos. I command the release in the name of Jesus Christ. E paruko shata lekata. Rakata barakato sekete Hallelujah 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm ninety one, Psalm ninety one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. 
Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. For he shall cover me with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Five. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day. Listen very carefully. Look at what the Bible is writing here. Next verse. Six. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Seven. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand by thy right side. It shall not come nigh thee. Eight. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying. They are kidnapping someone. This is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie. So in as much as you sympathize with people, do it lovingly, but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel. Let God be true and let every man be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never never possess your possession Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days Satan came to tempt him when he defeated him he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad let me tell you something my brothers and sisters I hate to be the bearer of bad news but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives and until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men last prayer father every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year I stand in partnership I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage about fruitfulness i receive by the spirit i obtain grace i obtain understanding i obtain grace i obtain understanding to know what to do to know how to partner with prophecy Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night he took out time that if he's to die here he would die and he would pray listen to me true story he was praying he said he had come here with an oil that i prayed for and then you know he went back and applied that oil and he was praying and praying and praying and then it looked like he fell into a trance and according to him he said i walked to him and i told him to lift two of his hands and when he lifted his hands i started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them 
when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see I've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here go and write it now and trust God for grace one hour in the night will not stop your sleep we spend three hours worrying wake up in the night every man in koinonia is an intercessor let me tell you if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor you are not a good ambassador learn it wake up and pray put that request on the ground place your hand on it pray it will look like nothing is happening don't mind what you are seeing you just pray forever oh lord thy word is settled let me tell you what will happen when you pray satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect with hell the devil will not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue Huh? and you pray and cry Jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times Jesus prayed Bible said looking up to Jesus not up to any prophet or any man of God don't pray once and sit down how long do I pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room gisting gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down read something spirit of the living god open my eyes and sit down and read there were times when any house you go to you see people even if they are just in their bible is in front of them but right now is this these are our phones everywhere you sit down you are watching film you are watching this i'm not saying it's wrong but life has seasons for god's sake a farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest. The earth still works on seed time and harvest. You are a man of God here. Reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray. Don't move around. I'm a pastor this. I'm a prophet this. I'm a apostle this. 
Sit down in one place with the word. Be sound in scripture. Be mighty in power. Most of what you need for your destiny is internal. Sit down. Don't become a busybody roaming here and there. You know, in the afternoon, you are there in the hot sun. You are moving around. You visit this one. I'm not saying visitation is wrong. But you are at a critical point of your destiny. Receive grace to sit down. Study. When you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your Bible, you didn't pray. Don't act like nothing happened. Don't forgive yourself for nothing. No! You stand up. Any time is right for prayer. If you plan to pray in the morning and evening, that's my recommendation for you. I've told you. The morning times and the evening times are powerful times. So said the ministry of Jesus. There are few times Jesus prayed in the afternoon. I'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong. But the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus. Wake up in the morning and pray. Wake up in the night and pray. Some of you as you go back now, don't say it's too late and it's too cold. Receive grace from God. Stretch a little and pray. And don't just pray anyhow. Pray strategically. Pray scriptures. Obtain grace from God. There's no light. You switch on your candle. You switch on your phone. Instead of just watching a movie and then you, 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 watch, you watch spirits to enter your destiny. There is a price for this thing. Let me tell you. God is not a magician. There is a real price. Either you want it or you don't. But if you want it, you mean business. And be aware of distractors. Are we together? There are people who are sincere people. But somehow it looks like because of their weakness, they allow the devil. Just when you want to pray, they just come and knock your house. Have the courage to tell people, please, I would appreciate it if you want to come and see me. I truly would appreciate that you just let me know. I may be studying. Or you can come anytime, but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying. Somebody should not buy a DVD and come to your house to watch and say he's own spoiled. Is that a blessing? What if he comes to meet you doing something? Please take your life seriously. This is about destiny. Make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass. Especially this issue of finances. Go and get... There are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances. Get it and sit with it. Don't just say lay hands on me. Thank God for seed. Thank God for the prophetic But Sit down. I'm a young man. What does it take to be established? Lord, will I end up in this one room forever? The answer is yes until you change it. You sit down. What do I need to know? Are we together? Father, we thank you. We bless you for tonight. You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy, it will fail. And you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed. Lord, bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word. We exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of god as a sure word a more sure word of prophecy we choose the word of god as final authority in all matters over our lives we stake our lives at your word in the name of jesus father i pray for your precious people every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives. I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them. In the name of Jesus. That you will act out in faith. And that in the name of Jesus the Lord will honor you. And the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders. Do this oh God and be glorified. For in Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. Let me make an altar call. Last week, because of time, I couldn't make an altar call. A gentleman sent me a text and said, Apostle, I was waiting for an altar call. I really wanted to give my life to Jesus. It broke me so bad. I asked the Lord for forgiveness. And so no matter what it is, we'll have to make an altar call. Please keep standing.
we are already rounding up. Please keep standing. Let's honor those who will be coming. There are people inside. There are people outside who are saying, Apostle, I desire to hand my life over completely to Jesus. Or I desire to rededicate my life. If there's anyone like that, you're inside, you're outside, you're saying, I need Jesus. Time is gone, but I need Jesus. Please make your way to the front very quickly. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody to come. Whether you're outside, make your way inside. God bless you. God bless you. Someone is coming. God bless you. Those outside overflow one, overflow two. Please clear the way for them very quickly. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You are standing before Jesus. This is the beginning of a great life, the beginning of a great destiny. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them, protocol. If there's anyone coming, if you're coming, please double up. Make it quick, make it quick. Our time is gone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. This is a place where no one at all for any reason and under any condition would condemn you. We're here. We're a family. We love you. We salute your courage for making Jesus Lord of your life. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why he created this platform. It's my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus, young, old. I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately and truthfully after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please come very quickly so that you participate in the prayer. Come quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word and I declare by faith that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King over my life and my destiny. I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for the newness of life. From tonight, I declare that I'm a child of God. I am saved. The spirit of the Lord lives within me. The grace to live a victorious life is mine right now. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for this once. Precious people you have brought by your spirit and by your grace. They are making commitments and some of them are rededicating their lives to you. You are the only one who can keep us. You are the only one who can build us. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of Satan, the power of sin is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now. I declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this decision. Um, there's someone waving his hands. All of you, please look at me in concert. I just want you to follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people who will just talk to you on our behalf very briefly. Let's appreciate them as they go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline 